How many people here can recollect where you were on 9-11? Raise your hands. Keep your hands up if you would say that your memories are quite vivid and detailed. If you remember who told you about uh, what happened. Um, if you remember what you were wearing. Not too many. <laughs> Just thought I'd try. I'm pushing it. Um, how about if you remember what you're doing right beforehand? Most of you, and afterwards, and would you, and, and if your hand, and these are very strong memories. Only have your hand up if they're strong memories. Okay, so I wanna now show you a slide. I'm gonna describe a study. This is a very characteristic pattern of, um, of memories for a traumatic event like 9-11. And back in the 70s, two researchers, Brown and Kulik, um, in, investigated memories for things at that time, like the assassination of John F. Kennedy or Malcolm X, and they brought people in the laboratory and, and had them recollect these memories. And what they found is they differed than memories of everyday life. They, they tended to be, these memories tend to be very vivid. You felt like you were reliving the experience when you really thought about it. Uh, they were very detailed and people were highly confident that their memories were correct. So, and they, they, they used the word flashbulb memory because they described these memories as if it's a picture taken with a flashbulb. So almost just like you, you know, they called the print now mechanism, it's burned into your brain what happened on that day. Um, since the 70s, there's been a lot of research on this notion of what does emotion do to memories that gives them this quality. And surprisingly, what we found is that these memories are not nearly as accurate as you think. Um, so this is just a slide that I used to illustrate a study that was done by David Rubin at Duke University. Uh, on, nine, on memories for 9-11, and it's just a, a, an example of the kinds of, of, a, of a, uh, probably a hundred of studies that have looked at this issue. And he managed to uh, get people into the laboratory on September um, 12, uh, 2001, um, and he had them write down what they were doing when they heard about the 9-11 attacks and also some other event that occurred around that time. Um, and it could be, for, for instance, a study section with friends. Um, and then he brought them back to the laboratory on September 12th, 2002. And he asked them to describe the events in detail. And he also asked them, uh, how confident are you in your memories? How vivid is the memory? You know, are you absolutely sure that this is what occurred? Do you have a sense of reliving the memory um, when you recollect this? And what he found um, is that Memories for the details of 9-11, um, not the, that the event occurred, but for the details of what happened, you know, what you were doing right beforehand, um, who told you about the event, were, were, were no stronger than memories for the details of the study section. Mem these memories declined over time. What was different is you could not convince uh, the participants that their memories for the, de for the details of 9-11 were incorrect. Um, so we have, and I, I'm sure I couldn't convince many of you that your memories for 9-11 are incorrect. I'm convinced my memories for 9-11 are correct uh, as well. All I can say is the data suggests you're wrong. Um, and me too. Um, and the reason, you know, why we think this happens, and can I get this slide on the brain anatomy here? So we, we looked at the um, brain systems involved when you're retrieving memories from 9-11 versus uh, other life events that occurred around that time. And, um, and what I've plotted here in the brain are some of the structures we've talked about. So in red, you see the amygdala. In uh, yellow, you see the hippocampus. It's a sort of long structure. Uh, it's named for a seahorse. Um, and underneath it, you see a region called the parahippocampus, which is also involved in aspects of memory. Um, and what we know emotion does, and when you encounter an emotional event, um, the amygdala responds. The amygdala has an influence on all the stages of memory encoding. So, of all the stages of memory, I should say. You now, your, your attention changes, right? So you focus on the emotional event. You have very good perceptual experiences for the event that, for the, for the, the uh, emotional thing that's, that's in the environment, but, you can't look away, so you also have worse memory, you, you encode the details of other things worse.